Um, we will not have communion tonight. We have that in the first and third Wednesdays, so we will have just a regular service. But let's begin with our opening hymn. The grace of our Lord Jesus Christ, the love of God, and the communion of the Holy Spirit be with you all. Let us pray. Holy provider, despite your people's hardened hearts, you gave them manna when they were hungry. Soften our hearts and make us grateful for your marvelous gifts. Through Jesus Christ we pray. Amen. Our lesson tonight is a lesson, a reading from Exodus 16. The whole congregation of the Israelites set out from Elam, and Israel came to the wilderness of Sin, which is between Elam and Sinai, on the 15th day of the second month after they had departed from the land of Egypt. The whole congregation of the Israelites complained against Moses and Aaron in the wilderness. The Israelites said to them, If only we had died by the hand of the Lord in the land of Egypt when we sat by the flesh pots and ate our fill of bread. For you have brought us out into this wilderness to kill this whole assembly with hunger. Then the Lord said to Moses, I'm going to rain bread from heaven for you, and each day the people shall go out and gather enough for that day. In that way I will test them whether they will follow my instruction or not. On the sixth day, when they prepare what they bring in, it will be twice as much as they gather on other days. So Moses and Aaron said to all the Israelites, In the evening you shall know that it was the Lord who brought you out of the land of Egypt, and in the morning you shall see the glory of the Lord, because he has heard your complaining against the Lord. For what are we? 
that you complain against us. And Moses said, when the Lord gives you meat to eat in the evening and your fill of bread in the morning, because the Lord has heard the complaining that you utter against him, what are we? Your complaining is not against us, but against the Lord. Here ends our reading. This story of Exodus from Exodus reminds me of a long bus ride with a bunch of kids. I'm hungry. I'm thirsty. When are we going to get there? I have to go to the bathroom. All of that complaining can drive a person nuts. When reading this part of the Exodus story, it is easy to dismiss these former slaves as ungrateful and faithless. God has saved them from slavery in Egypt and protected them. And yet, here they are complaining, wanting to go back to the flesh pots of Egypt and eat their fill of bread. Really? How quickly they forget their former reality in Egypt was far from luxurious. They were slaves. And for all of their comp complaining, we do not see anything any condemnation from God. God hears them and responds to their needs. But really, I don't think I'd be any different than the Israelites. They were in the second month after escaping from Egypt. They'd been wandering around a hot, arid desert. How's a person to survive? They're going to have to trust God and depend on God for everything. And of course, God comes through. God provides. The first gift given is water. And now in our story tonight, it is food. And of course, God is not stingy. The meat God gives every night is quail. Now, we are accustomed to eating meat regularly unless one consciously chooses otherwise. But in, in the ancient world, the average family ate meat only on festive occasions. And the other gift of food is manna, that mysterious food that comes from heaven, which, by the way, the actual Hebrew uh, meaning of that word manna is basically, what is it? Because <laughs> that's what the Israelites asked. What is it? And hence the name Manna came to be. Indeed, this is a gift that cannot be owned. It is from God, and no one can have more than the other, for all will have an equal supply. So they don't have to work for this bread or any of the gifts from God. It is just freely given, and all have enough. And this is just so hard to understand when we live in a world that tells us that hard work equals more for me. You have to earn it. And when you fail, you just pull yourself up by the bootstraps. You got to work, work, work. Well, not in God's world. God reminds the Israelites and us that our work, even in the kingdom, is not why God gives us daily bread. Here the people receive a message about the way they should learn to act as a people of God. It's easy to see God's gifts here as belonging to a long ago people who are dependent on God. It's a nice story, but it has little to do with us today. I mean, when I go home tonight, I don't think I'm going to find quail in my backyard. At least I hope not, because my two dogs will go absolutely crazy. But this word is for us still today, because we have a generous God, and whether we want to believe it or not, we still depend on God for our daily bread. Harry Went, a theologian, gave a great illustration of this. He said, when people are asked, how much do you pay for a loaf of bread? The biblical answer is nothing. Why? No one on earth has ever made a grain of wheat. Only God can do that. A farmer takes a grain of wheat that God has made. He places it into the ground that God has made. God's sun and God's rain cause the grain to germinate and multiply. 
When we hand over money for a loaf of bread, we pay the farmer for planting and reaping, the trucker for carrying, the miller for grinding, the baker for baking, and the storekeeper for placing it on the shelf. We do not pay for the bread itself. God gives us that. This world is full of a great variety of plants and animals that feed us all in a complex ecosystem. We are the ones who have made systems where food is more available in some places than others. God's plan is to have a table for all, whether we work for it or not. God provides and we take what we need. God provides a world rich in resources, and we really should marvel at this overabundance of God's gifts. However, it is also important for us to recognize that God's provision of food occurs in the context of depravity. The fact that the Israelites are finding themselves in the wilderness with no food reminds us of the reality of food shortage and famine that for many people all over the world may be a life threatening reality, quite often due to no fault of their own. The recent effects of climate change and war and terror, globalization on everyday reality of many people in places like South Sudan or Nicaragua or Nigeria, it challenges us to recognize that far too many people today do not experience the proverbial manna from heaven. In an article titled, The Liturgy of Abundance, The Myth of Scarcity, by Walter Brueggemann, he states, In answer to the people's fears and complaints, something extraordinary happens. God's love comes trickling down in the form of bread. They had never before received bread as a free gift that they couldn't control, predict, plan for, or own. The meaning of this strange narrative is that the gifts of life are indeed given by a generous God. It's a wonder. It's a miracle. It's an embarrassment. It's irrational. But God's abundant transcends the market economy. He goes on to share that what happens to this bread first that is given to everyone, everybody had enough. But because Israel had learned to believe in scarcity in Egypt, people started to hoard the bread. And when they tried to bank it, to invest it, it turned sour and rotted. Because you cannot store up God's generosity. It is, of course, easier to talk about things, these things than to live them. The creation is infused with the creator's generosity and we can find practices and procedures and institutions that allow that generosity to work. Sharing our abundance may, as Jesus says, be impossible for mortals, but nothing is impossible for God. None of us knows what risks God's spirit may empower us to take. Our faith, our ministry, and our hope are all that God will empower us to trust God's generosity so that bread may abound. Amen. We sing, My Hope is Built on Nothing Less.
Affirmation of faith. We believe in God, our Creator, who works in the hidden stillness of every dawn, who calls us to leave behind our fears and enter into hope, who created a bountiful earth with plenty to share. We believe in God, our Savior, Jesus Christ, who meets us on every path, who bids us to walk and talk as children of light, and greets us with love and grace. We believe in God, our anointer, the Holy Spirit, who gathers us into community, who works with people of all age, ethnicity, and ability, who nudges our prayers and prompts our praise. We believe that we are called to be God's people, challenging despair with glowing hope, acting peacefully in the midst of painful realities, and living joyfully as a reflection of our God. This we believe. Let us pray. Thank you, Lord, for the abundant harvest of the earth. May we be inspired by your generosity. Bless and care for those whose hands bring the fruits of the earth to the tables of all who hunger. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. Curb the impulses of greed and pride that lead us to take more than we should. Grant that world leaders seek the fruits of the kingdom for the good and welfare of all people. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. Sustain all who suffer with the promises, promise of new life. Assured of your presence, heal our pain and suffering and equip us to embrace all bodies aching for wholeness of mind, body, and soul. We call to mind those who are struggling today, especially those we lift up to you now in our hearts. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. Listen as we call on you, O God, and enfold in your loving arms all for whom we pray. In the name of Jesus Christ, our Lord. Amen. We share in our Lord's Prayer as sung by the River Musicians.
during this time, we will share in um, some special music as we are grateful for the offering that you give to all of us. Um, we continue the, to um, ask that you support the work of the church, not only locally, but globally. And we thank you for the gifts that you have given and for your faithful stewardship. Let's share in special music. <laughs> Let us receive our benediction. May the blessings of God flow like a river within you, dance like sunlight around you, shine down like the stars above you, and forever lead you on your way of peace. Amen. We sing one bread, one body.
in peace, serve the Lord. Thanks be to God.